hello, I'm Janet Cothelet, an advisor to the Foxborough Historical Commission. I'm here in the South Foxborough Community Club, a building that is very symbolic in the life of the individual that you are about to meet. The club dates back to the year 1928, and as you can see by the backdrop on the curtain here, some of Foxborough's earliest businesses are mentioned here, Collier's Garage, Foxborough Coal and Grain, McKenzie Motors, and you could call Gove's Hardware by telling the operator that you'd like number 19 for a telephone number. The social life in early South Foxborough was centered for many, many years in the church. But as the needs of the people changed somewhat, there was a desire to have other kinds of social activities within the community. And this is where the idea for the Foxborough Community Club, South Foxborough Community Club, came into existence. When it was decided by a group of residents in the neighborhood to build the club, they've asked several people in the community to join them on the building committee. One of the people selected was, in fact, the guest of honor for this segment, a then very young man by the name of Homer White. Homer is a Foxborough native who played out almost his entire life within walking distance of this building. He was born up on the top of Quaker Hill in the old Farrell Sherman House 84 years ago. At the age of 14, he moved down onto South Street on Hickory Knoll Farm, where he and his brothers and sisters worked uh, along with other family members to uh, maintain a large dairy herd here in South Foxborough. Homer went to grade school across the street at the Quaker Hill School. First six grades in one room with one teacher. When it came time to go to high school, he would ride in a horse-drawn pung along a dirt road that we know today as South Street to attend high school up in the center of town. Following high school, he spent two years in art school, a rather unusual calling for a young farm boy in those days. In 1938, he joined the creative staff at Ruscraft, designing greeting cards, a career that was interrupted for uh, service with the US Marines in World War II. Homer then returned to designing and worked in the greeting card field until 1970. It was then that Homer experienced a rather dramatic change in his artistic endeavors. From greeting cards, he switched to conventional landscapes, floral designs, some portrait work, most anything that an eager public was willing to commission as Homer explored his newly found talents. Giving up the drawing board for the canvas in a new art career. Perhaps if we could get Homer to join us, we could uh, discuss this rather uh, abrupt change in his artistic direction and uh, get some insights from him as to the changes he saw not only in his own career, but in fact in South Foxboro, this area that has been his home. Well, Homer, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. And how are you doing, Mr. Othlet? Very good, very good. You don't mind my calling you Mr. Othlet, do you? Well, it sounds very formal. I know that it does, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm that but, way. Um, but, uh, well, you've seen quite a few changes in the neighborhood. Yes, I certainly have. From dirt roads and, and uh, kerosene lamps, you name it. We had more cows in South Foxborough than people at one time. <clears throat> uh, now, did all, you have a preference? To what? Cows or people? I started like cows. <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk back. Uh, well, this is a story about the house that I was born in, the uh, Fowl Sherman House. That uh, was where the first Quaker meeting was held by a family named Sherman. That's why they called it the Sherman Homestead. And there's three Sherman families settled in South Foxborough. And that's why they called it Quaker Hill and Quaker School and so forth. That's the name Quaker came from. 
And uh, in reference to my uh, stint in the Marine Corps, I used my artistic ability there too because um, I used to make detailed drawings of the Thompson submachine gun and the 45 and 38 revolver, hand grenade and things like that for training courses for the younger Marines that, that were stationed there, and I was at Squadron at the time. Uh, yes, this is quite a deal like what I did for the uh, Marine Corps. Uh, I, I didn't do this, I'm quite sure I didn't do that. Very good. I think it's quite symbolic that, uh, that we are here for this interview in the South Foxborough Community Club. Uh, you do spend uh, quite a few Saturdays and Sundays here during the course of the year selling your paintings. Is that right? That is correct. I display my paintings here. To get back uh, a little about history, about the painting business, so to speak, when I gave up greeting cards, well, you had a little part in my career in the greeting card, <laughs> if I recall correctly. I hope you enjoyed it. No, oh, absolutely. At least you're still here. Uh, when I first started to do paintings, I put them in Mac's store, paint store up in Foxborough Center, which was a good place to put your paintings on display for the public and so forth. But he went out of business, as we all know, so I had to find a new place to display my paintings. And I had the National Bank, they displayed my paintings for me over there. Weekends, I do it here on Saturdays and Sundays, Sunday afternoons, display my paintings. Make an ideal place. People come from all over. I meet a lot of nice people that way. Right, and you're also here um, every Monday and Thursday night, right? No, I've given up the horse parties. Oh, that, that must be something fairly recent. Well, well for it, more years than you probably would like to uh, well, in fact, reveal in right to now. The uh, horse parties, uh, gentleman by the name of Harry uh, Law and my uncle Robert Powell, and myself ran the first horse party when the hall was dedicated in, back in August of 1928. So you started running whist parties here in 1928, and when did you stop running whist parties? About two years ago, I stopped because uh, I don't have a car in the, in the transportation business, and getting the uh, whist, uh, the prizes for the whist party and things like that became a more of a chore than it was worth. So I decided to give them a donation instead of running the whist parties. I got out of that easy. But most everybody in the neighborhood has, at one time or another over the years, received a call from Homer or been buttonholed by him on the street saying, uh, can you bring a prize up to the community club for the whist party on oh, Monday yes. night? Oh, yes. So for all of those years, you would run the whist party on one night for the community club and on another night to the fund the addition to the church. Right. You were also a member of that building committee, weren't you? Right. I and um, as I recall, you were the organist at the church for many years. I still fill in. And you still fill in, and you would also come up early and arrange the flowers on the altar and uh, see that everything was ready for the service. Right. And uh, <clears throat> to go back in regard to arranging flowers and so forth, one of the uh, pastors who uh, we had there at the Union Church, his wife passed away, and then they had a memorial service, so I did a stained glass window effect made out of gladiola blossoms. And John Hodges, who used to represent the Globe in Foxborough, he took a picture of it and appeared in the Boston paper. Well, very good. Now, the fact that uh, you've lived out most of your life so close to home, does that have any bearing on the fact that uh, you never actually ever had a license to drive a car? You well, did have a lot of friends that uh, provided transportation, though, didn't you? Thank the Lord for friends. <laughs> <laughs> Although walking never hurt anybody. Well, it's certainly been good for you at 84. That's right, it has. Uh, although I've been close to South Fox, but don't forget, I've traveled, some winters I've traveled 12,000 miles. Yes, <laughs> yes, you did spend quite a few winters in Hawaii, and we've seen many beautiful paintings of places over there that you've brought back. Uh, any plans to travel there again? I hope to. I hope to. Speaking about uh, Hawaii, the Federal Savings Bank up in Pops, where they hit, they have three of my Hawaiian paintings. I would imagine there's uh, quite a few tales to tell about some of the paintings that you've uh, been commissioned to do over the years. Would you like to uh, share some of those stories with us today? I'd be very happy to. 
Before I start talking about some of the paintings that I've done over the years, I am a charter member of the Foxborough Art Association, which was formed back in 1957. And we used to meet in the old, which is now Ravecraft Press Building on Wall Street. There was a bowling alley in there. We used to meet on the second floor. And then we went to other sections of the town, and we finally are in the all-purpose room at the Boyden Library here in Foxborough Center. Well, over years, I've done so many paintings, it's a little hard to begin to tell which are the most interesting or which I can remember above any of the others. Uh, I used to do a lot on speculation, but as the years progressed, more people asked me to do commission work, and now it seems as though most of my paintings are done on commission. And uh, I have a painting that I was commissioned to do of these people have horses and they also have a, a pony. And I'm going to cooperate the three animals, <laughs> the two horses and the, and the pony, in a pasture of some sort with action, because I wanted action. Although the photos they gave me, they're just posing, because they're posing for the camera and they're stiff. So it gives me a little flexibility in my work, which I enjoy very much. And there's an interesting painting that I did for a friend of mine who raises uh, Bisenji dogs. I did the painting when I was in Hawaii from a photograph that he gave me. And uh, the Bisenji dog, they do not bark, they're barkless. But they make a good watch to, uh, dog just the same. Now, the Bisenji dog dates way back to the time of the pharaohs. And so when I made the painting, I put the dog in a, local, in a focal point in the painting, but the background is made up of Egyptian motif. What it means, I do not know. Uh, I got the idea for, for the background from my National Geographic, and it couldn't, the background could mean most anything. And maybe it's just as well, I don't know what it does mean, but it all ties in together with the idea of the, the Egyptian and the pharaohs and the Visenji dogs. As I say, I've done so many interesting paintings. I did quite a few when I was in Hawaii. I've done a lot of paintings, uh, historic paintings, uh, of Foxborough's glorious past, so to speak. And there's a lot of interesting buildings that I've made paintings of. The Oku Cassett Inn, I made a painting of that, and the uh, bank building uh, that's on that site. Uh, they have the painting. I did a painting of the um, eagle for Bruce Potter at Raycraft Press when he renovated his office. Also, there's a painting that I did of the Bahaba golf course. That was a large painting. That was two feet by four feet. And it was an aerial view looking down on the golf course with the, the ocean and the mountains in the background and the trees which was a very interesting painting. I also did a painting of Mount McKinley from a placemat. So you see people bring in all kinds of things for me to get my ideas, uh, and then I just work them from there on. I don't usually do portrait work, but a friend of mine wanted me to do this, and so I broke down and did it, of a painting. It was a tintype photo. It was all in browns, and it was faded. So she said, do the best you can. And um, it was a tintype photo of her grandmother and mother. And uh, which, I mean, but, but the, the, uh, the figures, though, were a lot younger than that, but it turned out to be that who they were. That was an interesting painting to do also. I also do paintings for people who bring in different types of materials for drapes and wind, uh, curtains and things like that, and they want paintings that will tie in color-wise, design-wise. I have several photos here, and I also have a photo of the floral painting that I made uh, whose color and design tied in with the drapes uh, from which I made the painting and so forth. The uh, 
Prosper Savings Bank, uh, when it was over on the other corner in the old building, which took the top two floors off, and I have to kind of smile when I look what they did with the person building on corner Liberty and, uh, <laughs> and Central Street, because they added two floors. <laughs> <laughs> Should have say where they were. Uh, I did several pages then, and, but they took them over to the other building. And uh, I have um, a painting of the Central Street way back when they had the trolley car. And that goes back quite a few years. Although I did have a ride on the trolley car when they were still in existence. I went from Foxborough to Mansfield one time on the trolley car. And, uh, well, they didn't. They didn't install them anyhow until 19, around the 1900s. They already lasted probably about 30 years, and then they ripped them up. Well, anyhow, I have a painting of that. Also, of the Unistraw works, looking across the common. But the one I have over to the Foxborough Savings Bank is a different view. It shows the complete factory and so forth, and figures and coaches and so forth in the foreground, whereas the painting of the Union Straw Works that I have at the Foxborough Federal Bank just shows it looking across the common at the buildings in back of some of the houses and some of the business uh, buildings on Central Street. By the way, I got the idea from that from an old photo that was given to the Foxborough Historic Commission by uh, Willis Chase because it says courtesy of Willis Chase. Some of my latest works, I'll bring you up to date on some of those. Uh, I would say that the Foxborough Savings Bank, they have in their boardroom, they have about six of my paintings. And on the way down to that, they have other paintings of mine. Of course, they have uh, paintings back to the tell us. They have a painting of a clipper ship, a large one that, that the president has in his office. So they have quite a few of my paintings. Also, the Bay Bank, they have a lot of my paintings. They have a painting of the old Carpenter House on Carpenter Street before anything else was there. It was one of the first houses built in Foxborough by a fellow named Carpenter who came up from, I believe, from Norton or Stoughton out in that area. So they have quite a few of my paintings also. I've done English garden scenes and you name it, and I've, I, I tackle most anything. And also, I do slates. People ask me to do slates. They seem to be rather popular around this area. And I've done everything on those, but the entire piece, and nobody's asked me to do that yet, but someday maybe somebody will. But I have also photos of that, so I'm all set. Oh, uh, in regard to some of my other paintings, uh, there's one that I did that I thought was very interesting. Uh, it is, I did it for Mr. Uh, Richard Legee, who has a real estate office on Central Street in Foxborough. I did one of his present building for him. I did one of his home on Phyllis Road. I also did one when it was the first automobile franchise in Foxborough. It was run by a gentleman by the name of Hedges, and it had some of the old model cars out in the uh, yeah, Some of them probably just as old as I am. However, maybe not. But I'm still running, and they're not. Among the, I think, one of the most popular paintings that I, that I do, and I think everybody in town has one, and everybody that left town also took one with them, is a view of the Foxborough Common looking towards the fire station with Bethany Church and the uh, Offing Theater. I think I, as I say, I think everybody in town has one. If you haven't, you better get one. <laughs> I also did a painting for Dick uh, Legee of the Foxborough Hostron steamer. And I can remember when Sir Vincent's house burned down here on West Street, the steamer came down and set fires all along South Street. Uh, and unfortunately, the house was a total, uh, destroyed totally, which is unfortunate. 
But he has uh, that painting, and he has probably several others. In reference to horse-drawn steamers, uh, my father, who lived in Medford before he came to Foxborough, used to work for the Medford Fire Department on the horse-drawn steamer. So uh, I'm sort of familiar with the horse-drawn steamers. One of the first ones I did in Memorial Hall was a watercolor, and Pete Lovely purchased it, and is now still in his office on Main Street. And I've done several of the Union Soldier on top of Memorial Hall. And of course, Memorial Hall um, usually figures in uh, as an anchor, so to speak, of some of my panorama views I do of the Fox Procomber. I usually stop at Memorial Hall and then go, go right around as far as I can on the canvas with the, with the different buildings as they used to be. And of course, at one time, the first school in Foxborough was on School Street. Named, that's why they named it School Street, I suppose. And that appears in some of my paintings also. That was where Ray Realtor Building is now. And it had a little belfry on top. And I've done one of the Do Little Home. Also, here are a few more of the paintings that I have done. Cucasset House. Sometimes they call it the Cucasset House and the Cucasset Inn, but it's still all the same building. I suppose it depends on who owned it as to whether it was the inn or the house. And that's the old town hall. That burned about two weeks after the Union Straw Works burned. So I think they must have had a fire bug in Fox for that, that stage of the game. Actually, we should point out, uh, Homer, that the video process, as well as the advanced photographing of some of your paintings, really doesn't do them justice. Anyone who uh, is interested in your work really should make the effort to get down to the community club and see some of your work in prison and enjoy the brilliance of your acrylics and uh, watercolors. The... Foxborough Historical Commission has that painting. That's where you got that from, I guess. The old standpipe used to be just off of Main Street, between Main Street and Baker Street. It's the first meeting house that was erected in Foxborough. It was on the, what is now the present Foxborough Common. This is a shot of the Foxborough Common showing the old bandstand, which now is no longer in existence. The present bandstand on the Foxborough Common was presented at the time by the JCs. This painting has now changed. I, I took out the house and I converted some of the trees into apple trees with apple blossoms, and the painting looks entirely different now than it does there. Every once in a while I'll do that with a painting. If a painting stays around more than three or four months, Zappo is another one. <laughs> I have done scenes uh, more than once, and there's a very good reason for it, because I put them on display in Foxman, also at the South Foxman Community Club. Somebody will come in and see the painting, and then they have to go home and think about it, discuss it with their husband or wife, whatever the case might be. And then when they come back, it is gone. And so they request me to, win, to make one like it. And so I do. Pardon me for jumping in here uh, for a moment, Homer, but there is one interesting story that perhaps you're too much of a gentleman to tell. Uh, I know that most people would never believe Marie Crimmins would complain, but the town clerk was lamenting the fact that her office was the only one in town hall that didn't have a window. Lo and behold, Bob Cushman, the custodian, commissioned Homer to come up with a painting, and uh, Marie's office was complete with this window. 
until the building inspector walked by, saw a window installed on a non-bearing wall in violation of building codes and quickly put a stop work order on the project. This painting was taken from a photo that appeared on a calendar. The original photo was a snow scene showing drifting snow in the foreground and with the waves breaking your back. Several people liked it, but they thought it was a, the painting was very cold. And so, with a few strokes of the brush, I changed the snow into sand, and we now have sand, <laughs> sand dunes and rocks. Well, Homer, those are certainly remarkable stories. And it's quite obvious that you have enjoyed your work very, very much. I'll tell you why I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Because <clears throat> when I created, I believe that uh, a talent of this nature is God-given. And I like to use it with that in mind. Uh, when I see somebody come in and part with their hard-earned money and buy a painting, it does my heart good, because I know that they really enjoy buying it. Speaking as someone who has been privileged to own some of your paintings, I think a lot of us are happy that you want to share your God-given talent. And I must also say that uh, you make 84 look pretty good. But now, what's ahead? You've had uh, so many opportunities over the years. You've brought so much joy into the lives of so many people. You have brought so many historic scenes to life in a manner that will be preserved forever. But what can we look forward to in the years ahead? Well, I'll let you know a little secret. Foxborough is growing very, very fast. A lot of changes in Foxborough. I think I'll run for mayor. And a very, very fitting mayor he would be. We can now go back and...